This is code.org and this is my project so far. If you don't have a started project, you need to go back and do the other parts of this. And I can jump by the way. Yay. All right. Sprite interactions. Oh, good. Finally, this is what's going to make it feel like a game. In this sample game, the obstacle, the mushroom, my obstacle is iron ore, I guess, rotated and the health decreased when the player touched it. The score increased and the target moved back to the right side of the screen when the player touched it. Yeah, so if they got, quote unquote, the target, it regenerated. It didn't just fly past them. Find the code comments, sprite that interactions. And again, comments are just for programmers. So comments aren't actually read when the computer goes through the code. It's just for programmers to leave notes to each other. So sprite interactions is going to be, yep, here. And read the comments. If the player touches the obstacle, the health goes down, the obstacle turns. The obstacle turns, okay, like they did with the mushroom. Create a condition that checks whether the player's sprite is touching. Got it. So a condition, remember, is if. So I'm going to drop an if right here. Now, what am I checking if the player is touching it? So let's take a look at sprites. And rotate. Oh, remember? Perfect. If player is touching. Awesome. So if statements, remember, return true or the condition in them needs to be true or false. So I named mine player. And the obstacle is named obstacle. Keep in mind, your variables might be different. Whatever you created, my variable here is player. This variable is obstacle. So that's what I'm using down here. If the player is touching the obstacle, the computer will say true. All right. And if this is true, it will run the code inside of this blue mouth thing. If this is false, the player is not touching the obstacle. The player is over here. Obstacle is here. Then this is false. And the computer says false. And it just goes around it and keeps running. It doesn't run the code inside when it is false. Player is touching obstacle. We want the obstacle to rotate. And the health of the player would go down. Okay. And I think we're going to have to unrotate it when it reappears. But we'll get there. So rotation of obstacle. And that obstacle I named obstacle. And how much do I want it to rotate? I don't know. Negative 10. Let's try that. Ooh. Okay, now let's go ahead and do positive 10, I guess. Uh, let's do 50 to make sure we can see it. Whoa, that was a lot. And I'm already noticing that the... It's, boom, that's looking good, but notice that it does it way far away, right? It says it's touching way out. So what we can do now, I'm going to head to animations. This is looking good. So I won't need to do this for this animation. Let me take a look at this. Look how far out this box is. So when this part of it, even though there's no image on this part of it, hits the player, it thinks they're touching. So I'm going to go ahead and crop the sprite. And this is going to be a much better look. That looks good already. All right, let's try that. There we go. And now it looks like they're actually hitting. All right, so. Yep. OK. and. Let's see here. Should we only have it tip when the player hits it? Hmm. I'm going to actually change mine up. So when the obstacle respawns, when it's back over here, I want the rotation to go back to zero because it wouldn't make sense that it's just tipped over forever. We're pretending like this would be a new obstacle. So how can we do that? Well, let's look at our conditional statement that we have that respawns this obstacle. So if obstacle.x is less than negative 20, yeah, I want to put it at 430, but I'm also now going to say, oh yeah, also let's just go ahead and set the rotation back to zero. And if the player didn't hit it and the rotation is already zero, it really doesn't matter because we're just resetting it. So regardless, let's try that. Boom, we hit it, back down. Boom, we hit it, back down. This is looking awesome. I might do this just to make this more obvious that it's going up and yeah, maybe a sure and i'm going to use paint boom 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 all right boom there we are so that's looking good create a conditional that checks whether the player sprite is touching the target and i named my target variable target and that's my piece of pizza so let's go find this If frog touches the fly, the score goes, nope, we're not there yet. Sprite interaction. 
If the player touches the obstacle, the health goes down, the obstacle turns. All right, so we need to add that part. So sprite and what is the health? Oh, look, we have a variable for it. Awesome. And so what are we going to do? Well, they made it keep going down as long as they were touching it. So I can just use an equal sign and they called it health. So I'm going to say health is equal to health. And I'll say once a once a every time the draw loop runs. And what that would be is 30 times a second is how fast it runs. So as long as the player is touching the obstacle, it's going to make sure that rotation is 30 for the obstacle and it's going to subtract one for health. Now, what if it's touching the fly? Another conditional would go here. So control, if, bloop. I don't have a fly. Like I said, I have a target and player. So I'm going to go to is touching, drop it here. Player is touching. Target is actually what I named my piece of pizza. And what do we want to occur? Well, we would want score to go up by one. Now, score doesn't appear on the screen yet, um, but I believe we're going to do that in the next part of this lesson, but let's go ahead. So we need score to go up by one. So variables, I'm going to say using the counter pattern score equals score plus one. Okay. So now if they get it, the score is going to go up by one. This is a bad idea. So let's, we need more code than this. I'm going to put a watcher on score variable. Let me make sure that's what the variable is. Yes, it is. And watch what will happen here. Uh, oh, notice my health works. Jump. So you want to be watching down here. 50. I just got like 10 points for touching it, right? That's not what we want. We need one point each time. And that's why we're going to regenerate it. So the second the player touches it, they get a point. But we also want it to go back over here to its starting position. Where did I start it at? Well, just like I said, when is touching. Or like I said, when it hits the other side of the screen, I put it back at 430. So that's what I'll do here. If the player is touching the target, let's go ahead and I'm going to actually even put it above this. So target dot X is equal to 430 and then I'll add one to the score. And I know at this point then that it's no longer touching it and we'll only get one point. So now watch score. Oh, I'm not doing good. It's impossible to get more than one point because it flies to the other side of the screen. Perfect. This is looking really, really good. Game over. Hey, I didn't even make that screen. They made us a game over screen. That's nice of them. Awesome. They did. Um, you know, we have a lot of code here. We're going to have a really impressive game. I'm excited about this. So yeah, let's uh, keep going.